Oh, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. None of it adds up. It's so bad. I can't, I can't bear the suffering alone. I need to tell someone. They need to know that Fire Emblem 7, the Blazing Blade, is the most disappointing thing since my son. Everyone is able to run away before the dragon blows up, except Ephidel, the guy who can teleport. But did Nino really grow up in the Black Fang? I'm pretty sure you think she did. I thought she did. Everyone around her seems to think she did. She seems to think she Hello everyone, how bad is Fire Emblem 7's plot actually? I am Mecha, a long time ago I made a video series called Plinket Emblem and uh, I made it with Arissa here who's joining me today, hi. Hi. And yeah, we made that thing a long time ago and we sort of promised a follow-up video that we never ended up finishing. So like we, we did like one take of like recording that finished episode and it ended up being quite dated. So. Here we are doing it again because, uh, you know, we have some things to wrap up, we have some things to explain. Um, yeah, we made that thing. Damn, it, it was so long ago. Yeah. No, so yeah, well, long ago. well, well part, part, part of the thing is that, like, it's already long ago to people who have watched it, but it's even longer for us because we started this project in April 2017 when you were basically just screwing around on IRC and, like, making <laughs> a parody intro comparison of Fire of, of Mr. Plinkett's. Um, Phantom Menace review, like the very just you were literally just taking like the first paragraph and like editing a little bit. Yeah, that was that was all I did. I mean, yeah. that was when I started. Like that was like when I was already writing it out. But I think the the, the true start of the thing was um, like you said, like April 2017, because uh, I know that because I checked my channel and that's around the time we were doing uh, my FE4 first group in Let's Play, and we were doing like a bunch of like prequel meme jokes and Plinket jokes mm -hmm. during that episode. So that's how I know we were working on it back then, <laughs> but it goes back even further. But back then it was very confusing, like what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> it just looks like we're prequel memeing for no reason. But yeah, we were working on that script back when I had... Um, I remember at one point you said, oh, Mecha's gonna get this out, he's gonna get a bunch of views because he has 2,000 subscribers, and that's, the, that's forever ago. That's how long we've been working on this, off and on, like, we haven't been working on it full time. A lot of decisions in the project were made with that in mind, with the fact that we were both just kind of nobodies, and, and in a way we still are, but way different kind of nobodies, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, today we want to talk about the process of Link Emblem and making it and why we made it the way we did. I'm sure you've noticed by now, if you are familiar with Plinket Emblem, that the reception of it was uh, pretty mixed overall, which is uh, which is fine. You know, people are allowed to not like things I make. Um, some of it, um, you know, fairly so. Some criticisms are fair. Uh, but it's mostly going to be like an explanation and a thought process kind of thing. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, I think we expected that people were going to, it was going to be disliked by some people. We knew Fire Emblem 7 fans weren't going to like it. Like, yeah. basically, like, the, 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 the like, the, like, we, we kind of made a mission statement in the introduction, which is basically, we want to try to convince people that this game has a pretty bad plot. And by bad plot, we mean, like, you know, structurally. Structurally Yeah, has, we were like, very explicit about that, yeah. 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 So that's why I'm here. To put all the pieces together, to expose this game's story for the sham that it is. Although this game also has a lot of mechanical and gameplay problems, this video is going to be almost entirely dedicated to the story, as I can only handle analyzing so much shit at once. And by story, I mean the core plot. So don't expect long, in-depth character analyses. I might talk about ideas, themes and scene composition now and then, plus there will be a conclusion. But for the most part, I'll be focusing on what's happening moment to moment and how the events are connected. Like, and, and that was basically more for the people who are like, oh, I don't really like, not, who weren't necessarily like, not on, not really like in either camp or the other. Like, I would say most people seem to just have a general impression 
of FE7 that it was like a pretty good game overall. And it's not a like the thing yeah, is that I, I don't think I would like I would like to add to that that it was probably the the common most common perception that I saw was um it's it's okay. It's not mm -hmm. good, but it's not bad either. That was the most common thing, and I think I we really had an issue with that take on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, there was like oh, there's no real problems with FE7, and like. The thing is that, like, I don't even necessarily think FE7 is, like, a terrible game, but I think it does have problems and, like, a lot of people don't, weren't, didn't seem to be aware of them. Like, a lot of people, like, criticize the plot of, of more modern Fire Emblem games, right? Sometimes people have even gone back and criticized the older ones, but it felt like nobody had really ever, you know, t had pointed out, hey, you know, like, they're, or, well, besides Banzai, of course, with his yes, infamous in Yes, I was about to bring him up, yeah. But yeah, but he, he's, he might be, like, the originator of, like, the FE7 plot is actually a... a a big mess, guys. But nobody took him yeah. seriously back then. Yeah, nobody did. There was like it was like a thread on Seren's Forest, and the first responses to his thread were basically, um, "Are you trolling right now?" And like, "You can't be serious," and like a bunch of other stuff like that. I remember in the intro we put like a bunch of um, almost like preempting a bunch of counter arguments, such as like other Fire Emblem games have bad plots too, and that kind of stuff. That's like a false equivalence because. Those tend to be the best arguments you could find back then against the idea that, you know, Fire Emblem 7's plot has some real issues. Now, I'll just go on record and see. I don't know about you. I wanted to speak for myself here. Uh, I don't hate FE7. I actually like playing it a lot. Like, not lately, but like for draft races and stuff. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I don't actually hate it as, like, I've never hated it, but I like it more than I used to. I've kind of gone around a little bit. And some plot things, too, I've kind of become more positive on or a little bit more lenience um i know but like back then i was just really annoyed by i guess i would call it a misconception if, if not a pitfall or something <laughs> that like i guess i would just say like people just gave it too much credit and i just can't stand that sometimes so it was just a nice way for me to tackle something that it, it felt fresh i like making videos about fresh things and fresh takes I like saying something new in my videos and i felt that at the time that was something that could be fun to say and uh, you know, I, I also thought it could you know, get me get me some attention as well. But yeah. I'll just be honest about that. Uh, so I kind of want to ask, like, that's the way I kind of developed my taste for FE7. I don't know. Have your thoughts changed well, since then? Well, see, I can definitely say that I think, for me at least, and I I personally think it's been probably a little similar for you that the whole Plinket Ember project was actually getting out a lot of the negativity about fv7 getting it all it was kind of like a big absolutely a big, a big like a, a big angst rant basically getting out all the frustrations and then like i actually felt kind of almost a bit like cleansed after it like i felt like i'd purged a lot of the negative emotions towards fv7 like after after we'd finished it all and after we'd done it all because i also have become like i don't because like, i used to actually kind of really quite dislike it but the more i've, I've, I've realized more it's the people it's the ev literally no, nobody i would talk to would ever have a negative opinion of the game basically and i didn't have like a I'm overly negative, but it like it made it more negative because I didn't have a I didn't have like a, a very positive opinion. Do, do you understand what I'm trying Yo, to say? Yo, so are you saying like on a numeric scale, if you could do that, you were like around a five or a six maybe, and then everyone else you talked to was like higher, I guess, and that was kind of annoying. So, so, Is that so, a good so, way to put? It? Well, well, kind of like that. Basically, that nobody seemed to understand any of the problems that I had with the game besides basically like Banzai, who nobody took seriously. If you get what I mean. Yeah. Like, it's like it's yeah. like it was like this weird, stupid, like elitist nerd corner for people who don't like Fire Emblem 7. Um, I'm just like, oh, there, there are some pretty good reasons not to like it, I think. And I I think over time, I'm like, you know what, like, I'm I'm not like the biggest fan of this game, but like, you know, I it, I don't, I don't, I don't hate it or I don't really hate it. Like, I used to have it as like my worst Fire Emblem, the, the game I'd like dislike the most, but now it's definitely not there anymore. So I don't know. I, I think I've definitely come, it, I would have to make another like tier list of Fire Emblem set. Fire Emblem games for myself again, but I definitely don't <laughs> think FE7 is going to be rock bottom anymore. I think that mm -hmm. I've definitely gotten over it more, and I definitely appreciate it more, and that's also meant that I can be a little bit more receptive to people talking about it positively, and also unfortunately, it does also make me retroactively see more of the problems with what we did, and like maybe also feel like, ah, uh, maybe we're a bit too harsh and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, which we'll definitely talk yeah. about when we get to it, uh, depending on how much time there is, because I don't know how long I want this video to be. I know we have a lot to discuss, mm -hmm. because um, the project itself was like a lot of work. Um, but, like before we get into that though, I just want to real quick like remind everyone what, what Banzai X actually did, because people might not have seen the Cernus Forest threat from back when it was like, what do you think, this is like 2015 or something? Uh -oh. it, it must have been really old. Um, basically someone came onto Cernus Forest forums, which at the time I think was the most active place for Fire Emblem Discourse. I don't think the Fire Emblem subreddit was as big back then, or even Fire Emblem YouTube, I don't think it was that mm -hmm. big either. And he just posted a really long 
basically like a, a text-based rant about the problems with FE7. He just kind of went through it. He just kind of bashed everything inside. I think he just kind of took a sledgehammer, just like dumped on every single thing you could find. Um, which well, I don't, I don't agree with that one. There was definitely some things in Bounce's rant that made me go like, you don't. That's like. Uh, that's not relevant, or that's like yeah, like he, that he, doesn't really matter. Um, I think I I don't want to say this too much because we're kind of like tooting our own horn here. Uh, but I think we did our best to give FE Seven credits where it's due, and not get too hung up on things we didn't really care about that we didn't think were relevant. Like the the thing where Banzai went like, um, how's Legault like a level twelve thief? He's yeah. like one of the four fangs, right? Like that kind of stuff. We didn't want to get hung up on that. I think. Yeah, like no, that, that's true. But like the. The, we definitely tried to not because the thing is I think Banzai's rant actually starts off quite good basically because then he's because because he primarily starts off by complaining about FNL right but then he yeah. kind of starts to get into like random complaints about random things all over the place basically I, and and then it gets a little it gets more distracted and we were like we don't want to do that so we're gonna try and like go through the whole thing like you know clearly and present it all in a very like you know cohesive way but I think we sort of fell into a pitfall, unfortunately, <laughs> because because by by making it so we were very thorough and we were going through everything and we needed to go through everything in order to give context to everything properly so we could, you know, properly yeah. critique properly critique plot problems and in particular Ephedel requires this because his entire you know early arc is just completely <laughs> He's like a negative awful. arc, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The thing is that that he's it, by doing that we end up just reading a lot of plot summary a lot of the time and the thing is that it's kind of boring just to read plot summary and like sure we have like oh here's a translation there or whatever now and then right but like yeah we, we felt we had to like put in some jokes basically to kind of move to, to keep things going on while yeah. we're going through things and unfortunately i think we were definitely not really clear enough about what was just a joke and what was like you know what's actually like serious criticism and yes yeah yeah there were actually some comments on the videos that were like i'm not sure if this is serious or not and i uh, i think we yeah i think um we definitely could have made that clear it's kind of hard like i don't know we were supposed to do like disclaimers on screen or something to do it well, or just not do make the jokes at all because i think some of the jokes were just fun to make it's just we, we really didn't want to make a cinema stand since style video we made like a, a jab at them in the introduction to be like uh, hey, we're not doing a cinema things. They were actually gonna work towards a conclusion, mm -hmm. which is a very common criticism of cinema since they don't do that. They just do the quips mm -hmm. and they just mix it in with actual good faith criticism and bad faith criticism and stupid jokes and things that don't even mm -hmm. make any sense. And um, we kind of got lost on the way some way. Um, I, I want to like go back real quick to the to the Sorry. start of the whole thing of the of the project because the way it started was I, I think I remember it almost like word for word. I think it was basically just me going, um, you could make like a, a, a Plinket style, you could do like a Plinket parody of FE7 plot criticism. And I think you literally said something like, uh, if you do that, I will help you script it and make it. And I don't know if, if you knew what you were getting into <laughs> back then, but that is how it started. That was just two guys on IRC being like, we could do this. And then we just, um, again, this was, I, I, didn't, I don't think I even had the 1000 subscribers back when we started off. And then, um, we just started writing a Google Doc, and at first, like you said, I wrote uh, the intro to... I just copy-pasted the, the, the script of, you know, the actual Plank of Star Wars reviews. If you haven't seen them, a lot of this is probably going to be lost on you, but basically it's a guy that rants about the Star Wars prequels and why they're bad. And I just copy-pasted the script and I started editing words to be Fire Emblem terms, and you were like, no, we have to actually write our own thing all the way through, because, I mean, for the intro it kind of works, I guess, but yeah. it's just not going to work for the whole thing. So... We ended up writing our own thing. It's, I think, I don't remember how many parts we had to write in the end, uh, but I think we spent like at least one, maybe two summers in Skype calls, just working on the script alone, just writing it as best we could. I don't remember exactly how we, pl I don't, do, did we make like a plan beforehand or we just like, we okay, we're just it. gonna go through the game. We, 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 I think we pretty much winged it. I think the thing is that we made, we made a big list of things we probably wanted to talk about that we knew we uh, had yes. issues with. Remember we had, we, yeah. we, had a, we had a document with like the basic things we wanted to do and like, I know that we had things like Nurgle's, Nurgle's, you know, Nurgle's terrible, Athos is terrible, you know, and stuff like that. But we hadn't, we, we, we ended up discovering things whilst we were going through the, the, the script very closely. Like, we didn't originally realize that, hey, wait, this whole Des this whole Desmond plan for, like, you know, taking the Fire Emblem and killing his son is kind of stupid, right? We never yeah. really, we never noticed that at first. And of course, we didn't have any idea about, like, all, all the depth the of translation issues. Like, we knew about <laughs> yeah. the, the, we knew about the final one. The final one is actually quite well known because that's, like, talked about, like, on elsewhere. Well, it, it's well known, but almost in a wrong way, right? Didn't I point it out somewhere that it was, like, uh, what was it? A lot of people think he says one thing, but he's actually meant to say the start of 
it both. Like he, he says like a ear. Yeah. He, then he, in Japanese, he oh, leaves yeah. off the middle letter. And uh, I think I made, at one point we're writing that part. Because it, it was well known at the point that her name, the, the mom's name is a near, right? Yeah, Aner, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It was well known that he was actually that. Oh, right, right. The mistranslation. A lot of people thought the mistranslation of that part is that he says Aegir, which was translated to quintessence, uh, but it's actually supposed to say Aenir, which is the name of his wife. Yeah, but it's, no, it's actually not clear. Yeah, it's actually. But yeah, but in so. Japanese, the actual error is that in Japanese, it's not clear which of the two is saying because they leave off that middle letter, mm -hmm. that, which distinguishes Aegir and Aenir. And that's a big translation error that they fucked up. But a lot of people don't know that, I think. Or didn't know, I guess. Yeah, I know. people might have misunderstood the... Because I, 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 I definitely had read that elsewhere, basically. So I already knew that. So I know it's at least been talked about elsewhere. Like, yeah. I, it wasn't it wasn't like a complete unheard of thing. But I think you're right. Maybe a lot of people didn't quite realize yeah. that, that it was actually supposed to be very vague as to which he's applying to, which is supposed to, you know, credit you know, lean into the whole old Nurgle, like, kind of lost himself, basically, in his dark magic. Because he was like, he's looking for... He's looking for a way to get you know his his memories are like oh aner is important aner is good like or, right and then it's just you know you slowly start to lose it all and like well, what was i remember was it air you know was it quintessence you know like yeah basically get, yeah getting mixed up yeah it's an understandable error because it kind of the explanation that most people have given for one what i've seen actually makes sense but i think it makes more sense the way it actually mm -hmm. um is uh real quick i want to get into this little part of it uh before i forget because it's such an important part of it so a lot of the People, a big criticism that people had of Plinkett Emblem was that the voice that I used was very annoying to listen to. And I'm going to explain real quick why I used it before I forget, because it's an important point. Uh, again, back then, I had less than 2,000 subscribers. When I started recording it, obviously I had more. Uh, but back then, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but Plinkett's in the, in the actual Plinkett reviews has, I, mean, I wouldn't say he's like the lowest voice ever, but I wanted the voice to be different from my actual voice because um, there's like a lot of really edgy and like really dark jokes in there that I didn't really want to associate with my own voice. Lundgren sends soldiers to kill Lin, which shouldn't be that complicated, right? You get something sharp, sneak up behind her, and then stab her. Your wife will never see it coming. Ah, uh, I mean Lin. Fuck, killing old people isn't that hard. My wife didn't put up this much of a fight. It's only the young hookers who just won't die. I wanted to make it clear this was not um, like Mecha the Let's Player talking or whatever. I wanted to make like a distinction. And I didn't want to hire somebody or make somebody do like a whole recording of the script, just acting it out. I got at least one comment saying it's just gotten me to do it. I can imitate Plinkett really well. Um, trust me, you don't want you don't want to act out like this this script. This script is gigantic. It was I mean, there's a reason it's 15 parts. It was just huge. Um, so I wasn't up for that either. So I used Audacity's a voice changer to make it sound lower and I got used to the way it sounded I actually quite liked it uh, but I can understand why you wouldn't like it if you're used to my voice uh, my normal voice and you're suddenly listening to this and you're like what the hell is this crap why do you sound so bad mm -hmm. now because you know you're used to my voice but back then I had no idea I would have an audience as big as I did when I published Plinkley Emblem. Pl Emblem I think I ended up publishing it as my 30k special so that is um no, that's about 28k subscribers more than I had when I was initially writing the script so that's how that happened and I understand it and I have no way to recreate the videos with my normal voice because it's edited with the with the voice edited one there's way too many cuts in there to do that and uh it, it wouldn't work uh but i have learned from it i'm not going to change my voice again for another video <laughs> yeah. i think <laughs> I, that's how it happened I, I think also like the thing is that i think yours was okay-ish but i think also like we, we were kind of we also we probably shouldn't have tried to go lean into like the weird Jekyll hype thing when I when I did my thing for the Affidel right because like that was pretty badly received even by people who were like willing to put up with your voice yeah. translated voice so I think that was a pretty big mistake as well was like trying to you know oh we want this to be the opposite so we want to have like the shrill like you know high pitched uh, kind of sounding voice instead of the deep low demonic voice do you, do you get what I mean like it was that was the intent behind it anyway but I think overall it was kind of a mistake and probably. We could yeah, have, I we think it, it. Yeah, again, I uh, when I first listened to it, I was like, "Oh, this is different." But you know, I got again, I got used to it when I was processing and editing it and everything. So I thought it was fine. Uh, but what I didn't count on was a lot of people like uh, being bothered by it, especially since people. I think they heard your voice before in like translation segments. Um, so I'm not sure if that matters or not. 
but that was definitely a, definitely a part for a lot of people to just kind of stop watching because they just couldn't get used to the voice. It was only for one part. Uh, I wonder if it was even clear that the idea was that the character was like losing his mind and actually getting like alternative <laughs> personality. Yeah. That might not have been clear. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. Where were we? What's going on? All right, I was doing a review. Because we like when you're writing it, when you're working together on a script like this. And you, at some points, you just kind of make assumptions about something will be clear to the audience, hopefully. And you don't know for sure if it will come across, but you've been working on it for so long that you kind of just assume you'll get the point across. So that might be the same thing that made us assume that people would be able to tell apart um, the actual criticisms we had of the plot and the things that were just like quick <laughs> cinema sin style quips. That might be the same problem um, being shown in two different ways. Uh, but you went back to the normal voice in part five and it pretty much never came back again except for one line. Yeah. So if anyone persevered through part four and um, went through to part five, you have my appreciation. Because <laughs> uh, I do think a lot of the best works is in the later parts. I will say though that part four uh, is the Effidel rant, which is probably one of the most important parts of the Plinket rant. It is, it is really important to the whole understanding of the, of the criticism of the script, I think. I guess this is a good time to talk about like what is, what is our biggest problem with FE7? What would be your biggest like criticism of FE7 if you had to pick one? Because I know what it would be for me, and it's like related to the FE thing, uh, the the part, the moment to moment thing, basically. Yeah, um, like would that be yours as well? Well, I would say that like if we're talking overall, I think the pro my biggest problem with FE7 is that it doesn't. It, it, it's less specifically to do with F the Affidel plot, but like the Affidel like the plot like exemplifies the problem quite well. Yes. In, in the 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 story doesn't really care much about trying to establish what's going on and why, and just kind of hopes that you keep going because you're like, oh well, we have a new thing to do, or you know, there's, there's you know, like oh well, you know, it's a mystery, it'll be explained later, and then they just never explain yeah. anything later, basically. So I think like the in that sense, the Affidel arc is a good example of that. But I feel that's like a game wide problem, really basically yeah so, so i wouldn't quite say it's just the effidel although because because the thing is that like uh, uh, the thing is that like effidel as an as he's kind of oh god I, I almost said emblematic as a pun i'm sorry but but but, but, but <laughs> I, I think we used that yeah, too in the yeah, script yeah, somewhere yeah yeah but he's 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 quite representative of a lot of problems but the thing is yes. that he didn't have to necessarily be like one character like i've, I've kind of i've like i've mentioned to the this to you before but like if the whole effidel art was basically just a bunch of dudes kind of like doing stuff in a weird, incoherent way and just like falling to Ellie Wood and Hector and like pointing him to the next breadcrumb or whatever, right? You know, and, and there's no Affidel like trying to apparently be in control of everything or seeming like, you know, like he's some kind of plotter or whatever. Then mm -hmm. like it might actually be less, it would probably be less bad, you know, mm -hmm. overall. Yeah, whereas, it might not fix everything, but it might work because they don't work well, well the thing is that They're working past each other. The perhaps. thing is that like, when, well, basically it takes a, it's much easier for, for me to accept like a bunch of dumbasses kind of making consecutive making the same mistake consecutively do you get what i mean because that's basically what happens yeah. in like every fire emblem game is that the boss underestimates the lord's army right like mm -hmm. that's almost every map ends up boiling down to like oh we can beat them here if we do this and it doesn't work right that's like that's how you progress right that's kind of like yeah. normal story progress. the thing about effidel that's bizarre is he keeps making the same weird mistakes or doing things that don't seem to actually advance his his plan so you have this like this massive catastrophic failure of a character who isn't ca is a portray isn't portrayed by the plot or the camera to be like a complete massive failure. It's not even failure. treated as a mistake. Yeah. He just kind of goes, haha, everything is going according to plan yeah. every chapter until he dies. Yeah, There's... It, it's it's like it's why I brought up the Narcian example because Narcian is the like is the example of someone who compete who keeps screwing up, right? But then and then it's like no, you you screwed up too much now. You're you're you know that's it. You know this if. You know, you're you're, you're demoted. Yeah, you're, demo you're, de you're demoted. You're pathetic. You're 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 a disgrace to the name of Burn. You know, like if you don't beat them here by yourself, then I don't care about you anymore, Tear. Like you know, yeah. the, he he's he's clearly being like made out by the camera to have been a, a, a failure, basically, and it's like all played into his character of being a narcissist and everything, and it's everyone else's fault, not his. But like Effidel, Effidel just doesn't work in that respect either. So he's he's he just doesn't work on either. E he doesn't work for it. So yeah, like yeah. Like, Effidel fails to kill at least two old men that I think he wanted to kill. I'm not entirely we sure don't know. because FE7 doesn't tell me. Yeah. And we actually spent like a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what Effidel's deal was because we were trying to make sense of what he was doing. And we've tried very, very hard. But no matter what we can do, it doesn't. It makes Effidel just either look stupid or it makes Nurgle look stupid or, or both. There was just no way around it. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't kill a couple guys. Uh, what else does he do? He, like, um, 
Well, the thing is... He gets Darren to come along with him, which I guess just makes Darren look stupid more so than Effidel. Um, well, it... doesn't... That's uh, stupid. No, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more to do with, like, Ephidel's... Well, I don't want to explain the whole Ephidel rant there, but the thing is, his role is supposed to be able to, like, generate quintessence for Nurgle, basically, via the Rebellion. Yes. But, like, things he does seem to, like, not be useful to actually getting a Rebellion going. So we're like, well, then you find, oh, Nurgle had enough quintessence anyways, he doesn't need a Rebellion or whatever. But, you know, and then, and then we get into the whole six months problem, and among other things. So the problem thing is that Ephidel doesn't, doesn't seem to have a, co a concrete purpose to be there in the story, then it's like, is he leading Elliewood, you know, to the Dread Isle on purpose? That's kind of what we in, we tried to, like, interpret, maybe, but, like, even that didn't make any sense. Like, like... Because he keeps trying to yeah, kill him yeah, <laughs> on the way to the Dread Isle. Yeah. He sends a bunch of guys after him. Yeah, and it's like, oh, did he know they weren't gonna kill... Like, they, like we, ultimately, like, we, we, we... I think we fairly analyzed it by saying, like, the whole point was they wanted a dramatic moment where, you know, well, Jared was about to summon dragons, and then Albert, Elliot's dad, Albert, stops him, and then Albert dies in Elliot's arms, and it's supposed to be like a big dramatic scene. And I'm pretty sure somebody was like, "I want to have that scene," right? And yeah. They, and they just my dad like, was like, "I want to have that scene." I want to have that scene, and I understand why. It's it's I'm I'm not trying to say that all oh, that scene's like ter like the scene you know like conceptually is like flawed, completely like, root. No, yeah. no, no, no. Like it's like, it's like no, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. You have the the character come in at a very dramatic moment, and then their 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 parent saves everybody, but like dies. You know, it's a heroic sacrifice, right? You're and then the you know Elwood's quite down about it and everything. It's it's it, it's definitely like a moving. It has mo potential for a lot of emotion in it, and I think for a lot of people, it does have a lot of emotion in it. But like the problem is when you're when you're kind of like, what the fuck is going on in this scene? Like, how did we get here? Why are we here? Why is any Why is everybody like you know being such an idiot? Like, or you, you get what I mean? Like, it sort of starts to yeah. fall apart a bit, basically. It, At it, one point, you said that if you lift up the curtain, there's nothing behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. need to not question it, and the more you think about it, the worse it's going yeah, to become. It, it, it's just like the like it's like the Ninian scene again where Elliot kills Ninian accidentally. Like, technically, this is an emotional scene, right? And it's a good idea. Like he accidentally kills like the woman yeah. he loves. It is mostly an execution yeah. problem, yeah. I think, more so than a conceptual problem yeah, for exactly, sure. Exactly. Which is, which is probably what went wrong with Fates as well, <laughs> which is kind of funny because yeah. uh, that's the game that gets like the most plot criticism by far, I think. Uh, but FE Seven has the same problem. It doesn't get. I mean, it's, nowadays it's a little different. Nowadays, it's a lot of people who actually hate it. But back then, it was. I wouldn't say it was holy, but it was it was definitely there for uh, one of the more liked games overall. And again, we don't we don't hate it, mm -hmm. but there was definitely some uh, some problems there. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember like what else there was to to F Fidel besides the fact that he dies like a very pathetic death that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I think I think they literally killed him to make sure you don't remember what's yeah. happening because like like you said like that that's the whole problem with F with FA Seven is the mystery thing that you mentioned earlier. That's like the the, the things that don't make sense. Um, as a as a player, you're kind of I don't know if you're conditioned, but you're 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 probably gonna assume it's gonna make sense at some point. You're just like, okay, I don't understand this now, but I'm intrigued by the mystery, and I can't wait for to find out what was behind it all. So I'm gonna keep watching, and then the game just kind of instead of explaining what went wrong and why these weird things happening, like why did Albert support rebellion and why did FDL do all these weird things that make no sense? Uh, what is his master plan after all? The game just gives you new drama to worry about and hopes to forget about the old things. Mm -hmm. And I reckon they killed off Ephidel just so you don't have to think about what the hell he was doing. So instead they make Lim Stella and uh, who's the other one? Sonya. Sonya do everything. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, they just they just they shift they shift the focus of the plot away from it and because well it's it I think to my things are only useful insofar as they provide, you know, it, like some kind of dramatic or emotional payoff, right? And it's like plot you know, peep you know, the idea of having a plot seem like, oh, this was very well thought out or, like, well constructed is just... I don't think that's very high up on his list of priorities, unfortunately. So, yeah. Like... Yeah. I've, I've been having trouble wording why exactly this is problematic because mm -hmm. you could just not think about it and have fun with it. So well, why can't you just well, do this, you nerd on the internet? Why are you doing? Like, who cares? Right? That kind of, that kind of criticism. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like the way that FE7 is constructed in this way... I, I can't think of anything, any other term to use than it's like, it's kind of like cheating writing almost. You're not even, you're not finishing what you started and that feels like cheating to me. Uh, it might sound petty, but that's kind of the best feeling I can get for it. I don't know if you have a better explanation well, for why it feels so bad. Well, for, for me, it's just like, okay, so like some people don't put a lot of thought when they're reading or, you know, when they're when they're experiencing media. And that's okay. Like, I don't have a problem with that, like fundam fundamentally or anything. You're free to enjoy things the way you want, right? But like, some people like actually thinking about things and like when they're doing it, you know, when they're, when they're involving it. And like they, and I think that I would say that a lot of people get a deeper connection to works that they, you know, they, they try to like analyze or look into, right? And 
obviously for FE7, a lot of people have like looked into characters and analyzed them, or like they, they've gone really fond of those plot elements, right? But the the thing is that it's I feel like it's not good for a story to have you know such overbearing problems in so far because you end up with a situation where anybody who's actually trying to look at it closely is just going to end up being like, oh, this is kind of dumb and annoying, and like they won't end up taking the rest of it seriously. And I feel like this actually impacted my experience with FE7, is that I'm actually less invested in everything else that goes on because I don't, because I'm like, this, you know, this story is this story's written by hacks who don't know what the hell they're doing. Or like, it's just, it, 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 it's harder to be invested in something when you, you feel that there are just massive problems, like there are point, you know, you know, playing you in the face or whatever. And I will say that you know, when when I first played it, and I think when you first played it, we didn't really. I was about to ask your yet. first time. Yeah, when we we, we were we were we were young. You know, I was like I don't know how old I was, but I was pretty young when I played FE Seven. I wasn't like thinking about stuff analytically at the time. I so like teenager. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. I wasn't I wasn't really like looking super deeply into everything, and like I also treated video game stories a bit more like, oh, you know the, it, you know it's just there kind of to justify things that are going on. I didn't really. You know, I wasn't I wasn't really big on video game stories as a thing, but like I've actually kind of as I've gotten older, I've gotten more, you know, into stories um, and, and such, especially in video games. So it it whilst all video game stories have problems, right? Not not all and all of them have problems. I feel that FE Seven is quite consistent in terms of like, well, you know, it doesn't matter as long as I get this across. And I feel that I I, I get I also I'm kind of with you in that I think it's kind of I think it's lazy, but I think it also has a negative impact on people who are looking at things more analytically i.e. it's it's it it makes it so you're almost like being exclusionary to people who try to like look at things you know below you know no below surface yeah. level do you get what i mean like yeah they, they want to try yeah i i i hate doing this but i want to make like an uh, a comparison to another phenomenon in fire emblem i don't know if it fits entirely but what you just said reminded me of it. So, uh, you know, Fire Emblem Fates, it has this character called um, Camilla, and they made her, like, really, you know, waifu bait, I guess, is the best way we'll put it right now. And I feel like they think I'm not going to like their game unless they include uh, low-hanging fruit like that. And I guess, in a way, that that's kind of like FE7's story. is like they feel like they just need to make it I don't know, very simple or something for people to like it. I don't know. I'm probably putting this in a very I, poor way. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't quite agree. With it. It's 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 okay. You know, I I think I kind of get what you're trying to say. I wouldn't say that's quite what I'm saying. Like like I would rather make this comparison to like a mechanical example. Like let's say we have like a game, right? And like the game's mm -hmm. cool and it has lots of you know and it, 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 you know you you can play it and have fun and all that. But like if you try to get good at the game or you try to like learn about how it works or whatever, you end up finding that the game's actually a giant mess and really bugged and like super broken and like doesn't and actually like it's super it's better just to do this very degenerate um s stupid thing to like crush the game. I e like the the game design is like flawed in some way. Like, let's say like, it's like oh well you can just basically have you know uh do this and you'll always win right like 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 well like like let's take don don's like famous like defense map sucks because you most defense maps out because you can just like deploy one oh yeah and then AFK, i right? can see that right yeah and I, I think that's the thing is that you it, it's it's to me it's bad in so far as the people who are going to who are trying to put the most time into it and like are thinking about it like are trying to reach a higher level of like you know of of well, in this case, it's understanding, but yeah. Understanding with, like, what the intent was, what the design is, what the thoughts are behind the creators and everything. They're not getting rewarded for that. They're actually just getting a big fat fuck you, basically. Yeah, their experience will be will be yeah. worse for yeah, it. Because yeah. they'll be like, the next time you play that defense map, you might be like, well, I could go out of my way to make it epic and interesting for myself. But I know I can just do this and there's no real drawback to yeah. doing so. So, yeah, I, I can sort of see that. That's a lot better than the Camilla example yeah. I was going for. Um, for, for sure. Um, so... So Ephidel is like, he's emblematic of the whole problem, uh, but Ephidel is really just like an extension for Nurgle, right? And I feel like a lot, I got a lot of comments on, on Nurgle that we just didn't understand him or something. I feel like we kind of dissected him properly. Uh, I, I will say that um, there might have been some things I, I missed or that we missed on Nurgle that's entirely possible. Uh, but I, I think my, my, what is, what, how about we start with like this? Um, what is your main problem with Nurgle as a as a villain as a character? Okay, so my problem with Nurgle is that I actually quite like his outline, right? I like his I concept, like, yeah, right? I, Again, yeah. execution concept, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think that he's executed like just really badly because he's a complete mustache twirly villain, and he has like no and and there's the only way you can try to justify why he doesn't just you know hit the I win button multiple times is because <laughs> well he's crazy and like I said that just like ends up devaluing. 
things and like we're not like how am I supposed to take the, ca the you know the 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 antagonist seriously you know if I'm just like oh well I guess like you know we still got some chapters left so we'll get to the you know like I don't I can't get immersed into the story if I'm like okay well they're just they're just like gonna have to get lucky until until the ending and like the, the story and the game's not even trying to create like a big sense of desperation like you know we made the Thracia comparison as well it's not it's it it it, it, it just feels like, everything just doesn't come together properly in terms of making Nurgle a compelling and interesting villain. He's only fun, fun to read about in the in the notes, basically, when you, when you like, are trying to see the core concepts of what's supposed to make up his character, not the end result, not the end output, basically. That's my, 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 my major problem. I do like the idea a lot. Of yeah, I, I do agree. I think when, uh, when people defend Nurgle, they do often bring up the idea and the concept behind him, but rarely do they get into like how it's executed. Mm -hmm. And uh, what part of the execution that's poor for, uh, that I think, that, that, that's the criticism I see a lot is that his, his main backstory is hit behind uh, the chapter 19XX mm -hmm. and like, Clint Kishuna, and then you had learned that like, oh, he's actually yeah, know, exactly. the dad of Nils and Ninian, and then this death quote changes at the end. Uh, that's a big part of it. Uh, for me, it's definitely also the, the like, like you said, the mustache twirling part of it. And the fact that he can win so many times, uh, I think the game hides it pretty well at some points. Uh, but I remember particularly when we were examining the scene where Ninian comes out and like goes after Eliwood and Eliwood strikes her down and Nurgle comes in and he's like uh Ninian proved useless I need a replacement and then he hypnotizes Nils and then just doesn't take yeah, Nils with yeah. him it's like okay I guess he got I mean he, he did end up getting what he wanted apparently which is with, he has the Dragonstone anyway so I mean you, you so came he, for a replacement he came so what to gloat like, he came to joke yeah. about it and gloat I don't know it doesn't make any sense really like it it, it it, it, the whole the, the thing is again he, he has to be there because somebody has to dramatically reveal that it's Ninian or whatever you know yeah. what I mean like it's 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 it, it's again it's like the scene is conceptualized of of Nurgle you know gloating over Eliwood who's accidentally killed Ninian and, and everything and it's you know and, and you know what it's up. almost like it's almost like they made the CGs first and then they wrote the stories behind it because there's that there's that CG where Nurgle is like laughing at Eliwood as he's yeah. hanging over Ninian's body sometimes I feel like that's that's what happens mm -hmm. with this game is they make Everything first, and then they write the story around it or something. Yeah, some. Uh, I, I, I mean, that's definitely a possibility. They write the plot backwards. Like I think we joked uh -huh. about that before. But yeah, like I mean, the other thing. Of, and I also, I'm also glad you also raised the point that the thing is that Nurgle's supposed to function as a complete villain just in Eliwood's normal story alone, right? Like it, it's not. Yeah. Like and he and in that you can't really reach for like any. It's very difficult to somehow theorize. You know, 19 excess isn't there. Yeah, the, the it, it's not there. there. So what are what are your, what are your theories for what's Nurgle doing? Why is he motivated to do it? Just why doesn't he just like kill them? Blah blah blah. Like it doesn't it doesn't really make sense in a in a mm -hmm. in, in in that vacuum. And so you have to play through the game like another two more times, and you have to you have to kill like this obscure ass boss, or you read you know something weird on the internet that explains everything supposedly. And yeah. I think what a lot of people have done, honestly, I'm going to be real, is that they just end up reading like somebody, like, actually Nurgle is this amazing tragic villain because look, uh, here's the here's the plot threads that line it all up. And then it's so much more compelling when you see somebody else like explain it like that, basically. But yes. when you actually try to play through the game like this, it doesn't work. Like I, I actually firmly just don't, don't accept it works for anybody who's like trying to like, you know, it, who's, who's like going through it with like not like, uh, my brain's basically off. Oh, this is sad. Like, you know, like, the game's telling me to feel sad. I feel sad. Tier, tier. I, I do agree. That is that is definitely something the game tries to do. It's just trying to make you feel things. I was I did feel those things for the most part. I think I went through the game emotionally just fine the first time. I, I say I went through emotionally, but like what I mean is, I know I, I feel what the game is supposed to make me yeah. feel. Uh, but I, I, like you, I didn't really read it very critically. When you're do, especially when you're like reading FE Seven for the first time. Um, there is so much going on, and I particularly am very bad at tracking plot threads, mm -hmm. so I lose like track of them all the time. So I just kind of accept whatever I'm given generally when playing a new mm -hmm. video game, and just kind of nod my head and go along. And I think F FE7 experience is just fine like that. Mm -hmm. But again, like you said, where you the more you dive into it, the more you realize, yeah, like, oh, this is actually ha this is actually pieced together by duct tape. Yeah, like because because when when I dive into like stories that I like a lot and like look at the character motivation how everything leads up to like important dramatic moments it's it's it, it's very it, it always just feels like it, it feels actually very rewarding to kind of have like a greater sense of like how everything came to be this way and sometimes that can make it more tragic sometimes that makes it more you know impactful or her you know heroic or feel like more of a you know more of a yeah like a payoff like, it just feels yeah. better like this what? is this is why people what? have like build up to dramatic moments because you try to make sure that there's a sense of like it having been earned basically but when the practice of a victory it feels earned and it feels good and when there's a tragedy it feels like oh no like things could have been better and every you know it's it, it, you have to kind of almost understand the the weight behind what's going on 
whereas like FE7 is kind of like, you know, it really it, it just fails at trying to set up the weight basically. That's kind of mm -hmm. it. yeah. I uh, I lost track of my points so, for a second there, but no worries. Well, I'll probably remember it later. Okay. Uh, oh right, it makes uh, that, that thing that you just said. It also makes rereadings or replayings of games better, I think, because you're able to see all the mm. foreshadowing yeah. and all the setups better. Because you're like, oh, they actually they yeah. actually did that in there. No. I was actually Her experienced that the other night. Oh yeah, I, I have been else. too. I have been too. I've been like rereading a, a vision level that I've series that I liked a lot, and just seeing all the foreshadowing and seeing all the little hints and stuff and even even some scenes like when you know what's going to happen have a completely different like way that you can interpret mm -hmm. them it's, it's great but like fe7 is when you go through it you look over it Ooh, you're like Ooh, this is dumb mm -hmm. <laughs> okay but but for the record we're not saying fe7 doesn't have any foreshadowing whatsoever oh yeah right? yeah, yeah it, for it sure. does have some like i remember a particular um there's something like hawkeye goes like uh hey ninian children of destiny or yeah, something yeah. like that stuff like that um it definitely does have some um but I don't know the, the, the moment to moment thing the, the the things that piece the scene together uh that kind of thing that doesn't really work yeah. for fe7 i think yeah. i think if you like i said if you analyze it then it falls apart like if it does really consistently fall mm -hmm. apart and you know some people might say that like you can you can do that to anything um but again that's kind of like a what was it what we call like a non-secular or the other well, thing it's a false equivalency it's like we yeah should, like because and it's also un it's also like a bit unreasonable because i don't think thing many things fall apart as bad as fe7s do like mm -hmm. to me because like the thing the thing is that one of the things that cinnamon do is they try to point out like one problem with the thing and that somehow that's supposed to make like the the, the rest yeah. of the scene like invalid or whatever destroyed with facts and logic yeah, yeah. you can't counter that yeah, one like, thing where, whereas i think that like what, what, FE7 breaks at multiple yeah, parts. Yeah. You can break it apart in multiple parts. Yeah. And, you know. yeah, FE7 breaks in a lot of different places, and it's a consistent trend in why it's breaking. That's that's the, that's that's like basically supposed to be the overall goal of, of Plinket Emblem is to go, hey, like the, the, this, the, there's a structural writing, you know, trend in this game and in other modern Fire Emblem games that are that are to do with Maida that seem to like, you know, lean into wanting to just set up dramatic moments and not really caring about exactly why we get there or how we get there and you know hoping that the fact that it's a cool dramatic moment is going to make it is going to carry it basically right and that and 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 i think that you know like even i think at this point like it might not just be a mida thing but like we we kind of made the mida point because we felt it was like a bigger thing for for awakening yeah. and fates and for fe7 yeah, yeah, they do rely on a lot of the same methods. Yeah. That's why we made the whole... Basically, exactly. it was like a Mida hit piece almost. <laughs> yeah, that <we> <laughs> yeah. That was supposed to be yeah. like our conclusion. It was a little bit of an awkward conclusion because it's not like we can conclusively prove that... Like, here, here's like, here's like you know, developer's commentary from here. Kohei Maida saying exactly what he wanted to do. Like, yeah. I can't... But, so it's just... It's our interpretation of things, basically, mm -hmm. as a result. Yeah, it's, it's not fact. It's just an attempt. We actually had a lot of trouble deciding on, uh, like... Uh, how to even get into him and like whether we should even make the argument. We were like stuck on like mm -hmm. a part of the writing somewhere. We're like, how do we even bring Maida into this? And it is probably the part of the whole review that I think is the least uh, concrete, I guess. Like that's just kind of like a guess of ours because we were trying to figure out if they were like intentionally writing it this badly or if they were like, if it was out of incompetence or uh, if they were doing it on purpose yeah. to... Oh, yeah, I remember now exactly what the yeah. problem was. So we were wondering if they were intentionally moving on from things as quickly as they were to try and fool us, or if they were just... if they just kind of forgot during writing because they were that incompetent. Well, I think it, that was the problem yeah, we were it, trying to figure out. Yeah, because the thing is that, like, I, I kind of, like, joked a little bit. I think Maida, like, is a bit of a... Like, he, he joined as a fan, and I think he writes a bit like a fanfic author yeah. in a sense that because he's like definitely you know because yeah because he has I feel like these... the whole concept of fp7 is like um what if ellie wouldn't and, and had to win fanfic. oh my god yeah it's basically yeah. fp6 fanfic yeah like of, of like and, and like and this is not to say that like I, I think all fanfic is dumb or anything i'm just saying that i think a lot of fanfic authors like they they like see things that are cool in the stories that they like and they're like that's cool and then they're like i want to kind of like implement that idea that i saw in that story in the story right and then do it in this way and mm -hmm. but all they all they but all they tend to remember is that how the big things that leave an impact that's what makes them like the work in the first place and they try to like use those but they don't but they haven't necessarily understood like the the how you how you create such an, a good scene do, do, do you get what i mean so you end up yeah. with so you end up with like scenes that have like got the all the elements of being a very you know well put together scene and you've got yeah but, it has all the it has all the surface yeah, things yeah. of what makes it cool but none of the proper yeah, fundamentals behind exactly. it yeah it, it, it's smoke and mirrors basically you know, yes it, it, when you lift up the curtain there's nothing yeah, left yeah, that is yeah. that is our main criticism yeah. if someone were insane enough to go back and watch plinket emblem if you want to tell apart what's like proper criticism and watch just like quips 
Um, the jokes are just like kind of short things that just don't really matter. Like things like uh, when Elwood and Hector see Ion through the mountain range, and he's like, oh, he's a sage. How are we supposed to see that? They're looking through a mountain. We don't really care about that kind of stuff. Yeah. When when Florina sees Elwood from like really far away, and it's like, oh, does she have like binoculars or something? And she falls on top of Hector and she, he breaks her fall, even though he's wearing armor. It's like, that makes no sense, Jeff, Jeff and Bad. Um, that's just us joking around and making it, you know, making it less boring to read out the whole plot, right? Yeah. Uh, but the things where we like really go in depth on longer rants, um, that is stuff that we do really care about. So uh, I think we just discussed like two of the biggest problems we have is basically Ephidel and Nurgle. Um, I, we've been going for quite a while already, so we kind of, I think we just tackle like one more subject. Yeah. I feel like... Mm, see, I would actually, I, I kind of want to actually at least talk a little bit and give a little more credit to like stuff I've seen the, of, about themes and all. Like, I don't know if you Oh, know. that's 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 a good point. So you want to do that first then? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, so like when it comes to like people, I have seen like actually some pretty decent rebuttals to like our points about what is the theme of FE7, right? And yeah. I, and I think that one of the best ones I've seen is people saying, oh, well, it's a story about loss. And I think that's, that's actually a much stronger point to make than something about family. But I, I am saying that like, I have never seen anybody start arguing this stuff like coherently, like until. No, back then it was just oh you're trolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like like, like uh, no, nobody had ever even like tried to like engage like like point side me like what even is the theme of FE7? Like people were like oh it's family, right? They, they linked a bunch of subreddit posts that about somebody you know musing about it or whatever. I think. Do, do, do you know what I mean? And I, so I, anyway, the point is that I'm gonna I, say yes. Yeah. I'm gonna say yes. I know what you mean. Even yeah. though Arissa is like much more experienced at story Sorry. than I am, so a lot of the time I will just not and say and like, be like, yeah, Arissa, you're right. Just it, put it, it in the script. I, I'm I am not like the be all end all arbiter of how stories must be written. So like, please don't take my opinion as like super authoritative in that respect. But yeah, like the thing is that I think lo the loss argument is good because yes, a lot of characters go through loss in different ways and they process that loss in different ways. Like every main character goes through some form of loss, right? But yeah. on and I and I think antagonists too, like uh, yeah. like uh, yeah. Nurgle as well. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they, yeah. I, that's what I mean. Like every main character, including the pro antagonist. Oh, I'm sorry, you said main character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is that whilst I think that's a good, you know, th a thing, recurring thing to point to of like, oh yeah, there's a, it's kind of exploring how different characters process loss and like how you need your friends to be able to cope with you know losses and stuff like that and blah blah blah. And Nurgle, like 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 they, they, they basically my 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 major problem still with that is that we're ending up in a ending up in a, a situation where i think that a theme really isn't just a single abstract idea you kind of need like a, a more of more than that you need more of a statement it should be more of a sentence is basically how i've been like taught to think about um my right, basement right. has a theme it's dark and very deep yeah <laughs> but 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 like just saying like an ad like abstract noun or an adjective or whatever isn't really enough like those are like those are like ideas but like what, what's it actually trying to say right is basically what i'm and we we pointed to like direct i i would say you know arguments or ideas that have like a more concrete sentence and there are some other Fire Emblem games like in Fire Emblem 4 you know how like small mis lots of small mistakes add up to kind of to a huge catastrophe for example and I think that in Fire Emblem 7 yes there's a lot of things that lead to loss and yes you can you can kind of see like oh well you know like the way you get you deal with losses from your friends and if you don't have friends then you'll you'll you'll, you know, you could... You, Find some? You, I don't know. No, well, no, if I you, know where to you know, if you, don't, if you don't have friends, then you'll end up like, you know, you could end up like Nurgle, where you end up collapsed into yourself, basically. You don't, you need... Mm -hmm, you need, true. You need, but isn't that, isn't that a proper lesson to learn from it? Isn't that yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah, you yeah, can that, draw that, from that, the that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm saying, is that I can kind of see that, but like, I've actually not seen anybody actually link the dots like I just did uh, there in yeah. terms of like turning loss as a theme into like, oh, yeah. here's, an, here's a concrete message. But I would still say that's weakly done that's pretty weakly done because guess because how much do we ha like it's literally all all just dumped in the final chapter like almost all of that in terms of like oh yes i'm, I'm it, it really I does turn into like the power of friendship at the end yeah, like it, they, yeah. they they bring up friendship a lot all of a sudden yeah. in like uh, after victory or death yeah exactly it's like that 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 that, that is like a, a sort of like a statement that is trying to go on but like i don't think this is consistently put through the whole story at all like you know in any way and i think that by comparison, this is also why, like, I'm like, hey, guess what? I think Awakening did this better because uh, I think Awakening is super consistent about like trying to build up to that theme and has like, and everything feels like it kind of builds up to the moment mm -hmm. where Robin even the gameplay, up. yeah, like it, it it leads up to that, and like even though Awakening is a dumb, stupid, goofy like anime. You know, very, very silly, like hard. Oh God, you said anime. Yeah. We're gonna get so many comments. Okay, okay, about that. whatever. I, 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 P.S. I like anime. Don't worry. I'm just making. I'm making the comment like slightly sarcastically. But the, the, the point is that I think it actually builds up to that way better. Whereas, like, I think in FE7, still, even if we do this, you get granted that. 
it's not built up to properly, it's very like kind of forced in at the end, so I don't think it's a convincing or properly like very well put together theme. Whereas like, you know, FE8, whole game is like basically built, is like kind of like building up to the whole stuff with Leon and everything in terms of like the difference in perspective between Erica and Ephraim and how there's two sides to everything, like two routes. And it's like the whole game is like designed in, in that way. Like you can see it from the outline what it is, whereas like the end of FE7 is like, oh, we need to kind of like wrap this up a bit. What are we going to do? Like, I don't know, like that power of friendship. <laughs> I don't know, power of friendship it is. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's just... You know, again, it's more fanfic writer, uh, like, oh yeah, the power of friendship is like a cool theme that's in the anime I like, like, you know, all those <laughs> all, all those shonen anime I like, I'm gonna like have that as the final thing, but did you build uh -huh. up to it? No. This, this happened a lot during during writing and editing and everything else. It's like Arisa kind of going on a rant and I'm just like, I can see where this is going, but he's clearly more experienced at this, but I think what he says makes sense, so I'm just going to write it <laughs> like that. And uh, I'm just going to nod my head and say yes. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, I do I do agree, but I will also say like we're both like open to like, you know, being proven wrong on these things, right? Or at least like open for oh, yeah, like, we should criticisms be or like, the, like yeah. I think like, de like it's not like a debate about a story should ever really end, I think. Like I feel like all... All, all media, you can keep no. discussing it forever as long as somebody's got something new to inject into the discussion. And I yeah. think that ultimately, that's sort of what we're trying. We, we tried to do. We tried to inject some new ideas into yeah, the, something fresh. It's some new, some new ideas into FE7. I think we've gotten some some fresh ideas back as well, and that's good. They haven't totally yeah. convinced me. Yeah, I mean, me. the thing you just mentioned, like yeah. the last yeah. thing, that wasn't really being mentioned back yeah. then. It just, um, it just ended up going in a way that. I think it might have hurt a lot of people's feelings because we insulted their their favorite game. And I actually, one of the reasons like I was uh, prompted into you know doing this video uh, now, like what is it, like two years after the fact, you know, I guess like one and a half year, is uh, I was talking to Cyan, uh, Cyan Yo, a big fan of Fire Emblem Seven, uh, about uh, he just finished Thracia and he really ended up hating it because of how bullshit it is at times <laughs> for like blindish players. And uh, I actually kind of felt bad for how much he disliked Thracia. Like I actually almost feel personally insulted for him doing like that, even though he didn't mean it to. Uh, but it made me understand better, like, okay, I actually might have given FE7, like, so much crap that people just got insulted, like, felt insulted mm -hmm. over it, even though it wasn't my intention. So, in a way, this video is me trying to kind of give a perspective and maybe make some amends for the people that yeah, like, uh, I, were hurt. Even though I do stand by, like, a lot of the criticisms that I that I made, and I'm open to, like, being proven wrong on these. I just want to say, like, I understand what it feels like to have your, your favorite story, your favorite game being insulted a lot better now because someone did it right in my face. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I think I think the major problem is that, like, a, a lot of Plinket is kind of supposed to be kind of comedic, basically, and it's supposed to kind of, like, take the edge off of it a bit because it's so ridiculous as well, but there, uh -huh. are, there are supposed to be, like, legit criticism in there, t in there too, and, you know, it, 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 it's, I think a lot of people would also feel even more insulted when someone's complaining about stupid shit they think is... Like, like this is a stupid complaint to thing to complain about, right? And I think that's that's tends to, that seems to be what, what annoys me the most when like I'm talking to somebody and I feel they're just not getting it. They just don't get get what I like about it, and they don't seem to see why that's actually a cool thing or whatever. Like in Thracia, I like a lot of the bullshit stuff because I think it like it ties into like the feeling of of desperation and you know and, and being on the run. This is being, life, yeah. Leaf. This is yeah. life is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You just got put to sleep because we just yeah. felt like it. Sometimes yeah. life puts you to sleep like, it, for like it, a, you, you feel like you're the underdog a lot in Thracia. You get what I mean? Like and I think that's kind of like mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like important to like the feel in terms of the game feeling oppressive. And I think those that games exploring negative feelings is a cool thing and it's a good thing and it's not done very much in video games. So that's why I kind of like hold up Thracia a lot. But I understand mm -hmm. a lot not a lot of people like that. So like obvious so, so, so to me, that's like the Thracia example is, is like much more understandable for me. Whereas I think actually ours is worse because uh, sometimes we're complaining about, we're joking about, you know, things like, well, that's not how ship to ship combat works or whatever, right? It's like this doesn't actually <laughs> matter. I'm like, you know, you're you're right. It doesn't actually matter. We were just joking, and we, we just wanted yeah. to draw some some ships in Microsoft yeah. Paint and have fun <laughs> yeah, with it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, like I, yeah. I, 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 and I do. I would honestly like. I don't know if anyone's like listen to this but i would honestly apologize <laughs> to anybody who actually did feel like really shitty about that because like i think we didn't realize that 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 like what was a joke is really just you know w what was a joke and what's serious and everything was kind of like too much it was too blurred in, in, in really and in, in how everything was put together we we were so focused on trying to make it like plinket-esque that we kind of we, we kind of committed the fallacy that I almost want to joke that like Et Maida might have in terms of like or like in terms we were we were like oh that's just like that we're gonna make it like that right and we didn't really think through necessarily you know our own 
like how are we gonna what are we what's our major point what are we trying to do it and we kind of just tried to do it in a way we thought was amusing so we're we're yeah, guilty we of just, our we really guilty. just wanted to make a, a, a Plinkett style yeah. review of Final yeah. 7 because there was a lot of parallels between the two that just worked like it's a prequel yeah. like come on it's yeah, literally we, a prequel yeah we, we thought it'd be good but you can see how like we we almost fell into the same pitfall basically <laughs> might have fell into basically we were yeah. like and the, all those jokes yeah I'm gonna borrow those or all the all that setup that seed or those themes I'm gonna borrow those I'm gonna use them in that yeah. way. like we, we so so no one's a, no one's above criticism in that respect like we all kind of commit these forms of, I think that like lots of criticism of it, of our things are, are valid but then you have people like Diogo who are, who are just like, actually don't explain anything they're like this is dumb <laughs> or whatever <laughs> just FE7 fanboys forever I'm like ah well screw you guys I don't care about you but if, if, you, if you felt like you know you know annoyed like I do I am sorry for like the people who felt like you know you know you're being mm -hmm. overly nitpicky about certain things and all that because I understand that yeah yeah, I uh, me too. Same for me. And uh, I will happily engage people in the comment section or even on the, on, on recording sometimes about this kind of stuff. Um, speaking of which, I was actually planning on having uh, Cyan on for this kind of thing, mm -hmm. but I figured it'd be more fun to have uh, just the two of us talking about the process first uh, so that Cyan doesn't have to sit here uh, twiddling his thumbs while we talk about mm -hmm. that. And there might be a video in the future where, well, actually, I, I, I don't want to call it a debate, but like a, a proper discussion about uh, FE7 to, I mean, like you said, it, it, it doesn't ever have to end with anything, uh, a debate about like a discussion about the video game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it would be interesting to have like multiple perspectives talking about FE7. Because Sion, like I said before, uh, he really likes FE7. Mm -hmm. He thinks it's it's his favorite, I think, like by far. So uh, it'd be interesting to see like his perspective against yours. And the reason I'm not doing it with Sion alone is because, uh, you know, I can't handle I, I'm, I'm pretty bad. Like one of the one of my personal takeaways from Plinkett Emblem is uh, I'm not very good at writing story criticisms myself. Like I don't have as much of a grasp on it as I do on gameplay. So I try to stick to what I know, and I, I'm never going to change my voice again. Those are the two main <laughs> takeaways from from Plinkett Emblem. Also, I'm never writing a Plinkett review again, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my main takeaway. I was I was going to talk like more about like um, either like Desmond or. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Athos. I think, uh, I think, but like our, our, the, the segments kind of speak for themselves, mm -hmm. and we can always discuss them in the next thing, right? I think Athos is like pretty, pretty late. I don't think I don't think people have much of a problem with the way we talked about Athos. Really, I think that really our major point about comparing him to Goto and how you know a, you know Grandma and Athos should have just been combined into one character called Athos. That's like that's like the peak <laughs> of that's the peak of our Athos criticism. I don't think anybody really disagrees with it. It's almost as if Grandma and Athos should have just been combined into one character called Athos. It doesn't get any clearer than yeah, that, yeah. though, and that's what that that line right there. I'm I'm actually very proud yeah. of that one. Yeah. I, I really I really like I I, I go stamp by that forever, and I, that's one of the reasons I want to do a Plinket review, yeah. just kind of for that line. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when it came to fruition, <laughs> but just for that, I thought it was worth it. Yep. Uh, anyway, uh, how about we round it up here? Are I you sure. I don't have any closing thoughts left, but maybe you do. No, I think that's that's basically a, a, about it. I think we covered everything. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you if you put if you put up through this, th also thank you for watching. If you did watch the whole of Plinket Emblem as well, because it whilst it was all a big joke and a big mess, um, it was something we put a lot of effort into, and like we're we're happy that at least some people you know enjoyed it and had gave pe some people some food for thought. So let's hey, yeah. don't sell it short. Like the first part of a lot of views is yeah. just obviously if you if you the further you go, yeah. less people will watch it. This is nature of any series mm -hmm. whatsoever. Uh, but at least, I know at least four thousand people made it all the way through the end. That's what I know. And some people really loved it, which mm -hmm. I do really appreciate. Uh, there was definitely a lot, a lot, a lot of work into it. Like this is the, that's by far the project I spent the most time on of any project, <laughs> like total. Yeah. Despite the clumsy editing and despite the occasionally um, like errors mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, I made in recording and everything. That's it was a, definitely a passion project. It was made out of love for Fire Emblem more than it was out of hate for Fire Emblem. Yeah, 7, definitely, definitely. No hate, no hate. We just we just really like Fire Emblem, <laughs> and uh, we know you guys do too. So uh, I'll see you next time, I guess. Peace around. See ya. Peace. <laughs>